I want to talk about water control structures really quick. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. Um, it all depends upon the management of your land. I don't like water control structures. John Meikle, um, who's in Fish and Game up and, and uh, he's a good friend of mine, and I have arguments over this all the time. He's a waterfowl biologist. So I'm training in waterfowl biology and game bird biology. But um, to me, um, my mentors, when I'm doing this stuff, were like, if you can build a wetland and walk away from it, not have any management to it, that's ideal. Um, but um, John's like, we need to manage the water levels for waterfowl. It's all different philosophies and different, um, different things. I think you do, it's a little bit of both. Um, the easiest type of water structure is some type of drop log water structure. Um, this is actually a, a, a hot springs wetlands up in Rotorua that a friend of mine um, and Doc did. Morris Wilkie did this one. Um, that um, put the dock. Uh, I think Neewa designed the structure there. Um, but most of them, Eastern Fishing Game has developed this one that, that goes in. Um, it's off the North American model, but except for the North American model, we don't use concrete. We use um, either plastic or galvanized steel. It's a lot lighter and easier to transport. This is 1.3 tons. Um, but um, they developed a, a fish passage for Trevor. <laughs> for these because once you put your logs in here your logs set your level so that this gets put into the wetland this is your exit out to the wetland um so this is a little ramp it has muscle spat going down the ramp and then out the back of the ramp down and outside the the, the culvert really good if you if you, you have muscle spat in the boat yeah, yeah muscle spat rope yep yeah. yeah. um Water control is, especially if you have issues with invasive fish, like they do in Rotorua and um, in, in Waikato, these are great because you can dry the wetland out and get rid of your invasive fish, but, and, and then put the pores back in and, and fill the wetland up. So it all depends upon your management. We don't really have a lot of- oh, wait. Yes, we do in the Waimea land area. Okay, yep. So if, if you got connectivity to areas with, with, with with pest fish, you don't want to get pest fish into your wetland, especially koi carp, rud, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's actually a good option to put water control structures in. Again, if you're going to fail, if your wetland's going to fail, it's around that pipe going through your damn wall. Um, so it's just one of those system maintenance things. Just keep keep checking on it and making sure. But now, with instead of having a smooth pipe with the fringes pipe, we get very little tunneling anymore. Um, so failures is a little bit less. Um, there's one in place just to show you what it looks like without the without the fish control structure. But basically, you know, that's it in there. Fairly simple. You put logs and you can you can manipulate the management. So that's sorry, right. is that connecting two water bodies to pond to wetland areas together or is it it's it's the outlet of the wetland. So it'll go into a stream. So or, rather than a spillway, yep. you've got a pipe. Yep. Outlet. Yep. So when you put water control structure, you better have a spillway too, because that will block up. Yep. And if you live in North America, the beavers will build a dam right there. <laughs> <laughs> I've spent five years of my career ripping out dams on these things so I can open them up to manage them, which is probably why I tend to avoid them um, because of the management and, and the time I spend in them. Dangerous. Um, the, the, these are 300 mil, so they're not near as dangerous, but ours were dangerous because they were almost a meter. Mm -hmm. And you get, you, if you're letting out a wetland and you slip, it can suck you in. And if you have logs and stuff in there, we had one guy um, in the irrigation culvert die when I was working there. Um, so when I'm breaking out those beaver dams, I've got safety belts and I always had safety belts and everything on me. Um, these aren't near as dangerous, but you just gotta be careful around them. Um, Matt, so what do you use that when you put logs in there? That we're put, that they put um, timber right in, in here. There's a, there's a groove. So you set your water levels based on those logs. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, it's so still, it's a weird. It's a weird, yeah. yeah. So you can, you can say, hey, you know, we've got too much water. You pull the log out, it drops it down, whatever, 500 mils or whatever your log, your log is. Yep. Yep. So um, again, Untreated, I generally use untreated wood because when you put untreated wood in there, it soaks the wood up, it expands, it soaks the water up, it expands and seals itself. Use treated stuff, it will seep through. Um, the loss is minimal. Um, in, the, in the US, they've got aluminium ones with rubber seals that you put on, 
and they clip into each other so there's actually no flow through them. And um, hopefully, fingers crossed, and I'll talk to the Duck Frontier guys, um, they're using these similar structures on tile drainage now in the States, commanding the groundwater levels in the tile and they're getting really good results around um, um, water quality. I'm using them down on like cleaner sites. Yep. I'm trying to do this. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But as the same, never line that, always have a spillway because that, you know, logs, vegetation comes in, hugs that up. If you're not there to clean it, you're on a holiday or something, you'll end up washing away your, your, your dam wall. And um, this is a John Meekle simple contraption, um, just, a, just an, uh, an old tube and some pipe, and that, and that sets his water level. So when the water level goes there, it flows down in there, it throws out that tube. Um, so he puts that into the wetlands at the base, and that's how the height of his, his water level that he wants in that wetland. He's managing the water so he wants shallow water anyways. So it works. It was sim simple and cheap. Um, it costs it cost him to make it cost him about a thousand dollars to make those concrete ones. This you know fifty bucks. You know so um, again you got to maintain them. The other thing you can do if you, especially small wetland if you want to have the option of draining is you put a pipe in with a screw top on the end or on the, on the outside. And if you want to drain it, you just unscrew that, that, that um, just um, drainage pipe that, and just unscrew it and drain it. Um, is the simplest way if you want it and the cheapest. You have to pick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just, just pipe with, with, with a plug at the end. You just unscrew it and drain your weapon. It's the simplest. You can do, um, I, I couldn't find a photograph or one of my photographs. I found some, but I didn't want to use other people's. But sometimes we use an elbow on the inside and, and that sets the top. And, and goes in and flows in. There's all kinds of different water control structures, but it's around maintaining those, those water controls. I personally like to make mine as natural as possible, but there's times, especially if we're, you're going wetland for treatments or you've got invasive some fish that you want to control those levels, and that's what this comes in for. So I, I'd be amiss if I didn't talk about them. Or something on a corner way that can be used as a That's right. Yeah. Yep. So. so so council, you know, usually council, you can't spray certain sprays um, like met sulfur and drip core over, over water. But um, when we were north and we had alligator weed and we would drain the wetland, let it go completely dry. And then we were allowed to, to spray the and, and to control alligator weed. So it does have its place. Again, this is a, a drop off structure. Some guy just built his own um, out of concrete, just the guy come and put the concrete for me, build a mold right in the, in the structure and just had them for it. Um, I've seen a couple of these. If, if there's an old factory nearby and with, with heating pipes, the screw gates, uh, they just end up on farms to, to control water and drain water. They seem to work, but they'll rust. Uh, simple log one, this or simple wood one that, they, that was built that they again stick the logs in to, to control the water levels. Interestingly, um, the UK are using this to control water levels, a similar system to control water levels and drainage ditches to improve water quality in, in drains. So I'll have a chat with you guys in front here about that in the future. Um, Bean notch weirs are pretty typical. We usually use for monitoring water, but um, again, yes, sir? Yeah, just, just a comment on the, the pictures you present in the house. So if you look at the existing plan, uh, you really it's a simple silver. That go down. Yep. It's just the full of the of the wetland. Yep. And it's just a big wetland uh, in the summer. The temperature, the first sentiment is uh, really high. It's like up to yep. 55, 58, sometimes 30 degrees. Yep. And so there is a sign of uh, pollution because of the temperature, the humidity is pretty uh, very high. So yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes avoid this kind of That's right. Yeah. Uh, That's right. Yep. Yeah. Everybody understand that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but but it is and, and and we 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 have those issues dealing with some of the bigger dams too when they release water. Some of it's deoxygenated or too warm and or has a clip, you know, those kind of things. Being that squeers are, are are used. Um, I've seen these used basically in treatment weapons um, for the most part, but. Um, problem with fish passage with these. So a little spat rope through there might actually um, help. But usually V-notch weirs are used mainly for measuring 
water flow. Yeah, or you can have a floating ramp off there. This, this, uh, yep. or, um, uh, flat of um, conveyor belt material that you um, just push away when you want to measure it and then you put it back. Um, so, yeah, yeah my, my biggest point is, is around fish passage. If, if you put water control structures in, you're going to make sure you have a foot inside the fish passage if, if your main water control is that structure. But they won't come up that spillway unless you've got water flowing in that spillway. I'd just like to back up Sib's point. Um, temperature is a major problem. We do get over 30 degrees, but mostly from from farm ponds, and so we've measured them, and it's sending off the top, and it can really change the colors of the streams and streams in big time. You only get midges really, so yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. something you'd want to take in water from lower down. Or or you draw down at it at a, at a time where it's not oh, an issue. Yeah. No. Um, so that you can you, you just need you to change your management, and and if you have if you have a, a question, you Craig. And and Trevor will will be able to help so give you that that information if you have that. I would highly say that most of your wetlands, if you don't need to, don't put water control structures in. And then um, rock spillways, um, always fun. Need a little bit of engineering design around them. Um, so generally, I I'm not a trained engineer, although I've worked with some some of the best wetland engineers in the world. I've got some limited engineers and stuff, but um, when it comes to the spillways, um, rock spillways, I let the engineers do all the engineering for me, and then we just use that um, because the if you have that's where you could have a failure. If I'm spilling over undisturbed soil, I don't have a spillway over undisturbed soil. I'm not worried about it as long as I've got a good gradient. But if, like this is, if we had to excavate the soil, a rock spillway, this isn't completed yet, but a rock spillway is, is the way to go. This is that new world design wetland. Just a comment on, on rock, however, um, rock does absorb the heat yep. uh, mm -hmm. and transfers it back into the water. So that can be an issue unless you can get some kind of canopy cover over it or, and, or grow carrots in it. Yep. And that's not the ideal rock for a good rock spillway. It's just, we didn't have the ideal rock. I, prefer angular rock because it, it, it's less likely to move. Um, but it's all we had. So we tried to break some of that river rock up, get more angular rock, but um, the expected flows over here is going to be minimal. Um, I, I don't think it's going to flow hardly at all unless we get a 100 year flood. Yeah, that's, that's the thing, Tom. They only flow in massive <laughs> big rainfall events or large, very large. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and fish passage. So just because then Trevor is going to be here, I'd better say, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, make sure you got fish passage. Um, and if you're, if you're, I don't know what you had. Did you have a program around fish passage for helping fund putting fish passage? Yeah, in? we're about to launch a. a sure, a, I should call it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, no, for we're um, targeting about four and a half thousand um, uh, stream structures over the next five years. Uh, to assist and remediate uh, on private land mostly because council's done most of its own uh, structures. And so, yeah, watch the space, I 